Do you love the Lord? Are you sure you love the Lord? Do you need the Lord? Put your hands together for the Teens Choir. Put your hands together for Jesus for them. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 13. Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them. Praise the Lord. Jesus lay hand on the children and blessed them. Today we have brought our children before the Lord. And the Lord will lay his hand on them and bless them. I want to open your mouth and pray. That hand has laid up upon the children today. That good things begin to happen in their lives. That God will make them a sign and a wonder indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Please open your mouth and pray. Hands are going to be laid on them today in the name of Jesus. Parents, are you happy about that prayer point? That God is going to begin a new thing in the life of our children from today. In the name of Jesus, children, pray for yourself. Pray, pray. As hands are laid on me today, God, begin something good in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any one of them that will be challenged academically, that as hands are laid on them today, O oh Lord, will pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That will be a turn around in their stories. In the name of Jesus. Parents, are you praying? You know how much you have struggled. You know the pain in your heart. Because that child is not doing well in school. Open your mouth and pray. Something is coming on them this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, as us are laid on them, O oh Lord, every spirit of stubbornness, every spirit of the world shall be separated from them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They are meant to be signs and wonders, O oh Lord. So your word says, Behold, the children the Lord has given unto me. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs, we are for wonders. Pray, pray, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray today so that we don't need to go around tomorrow. Pray today so that we don't need to go for deliverance tomorrow. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's close our eyes as we go to God to open our hearts this morning. Say with me, I open my heart unto you, O Lord my God. In your presence I stand, my light and my shepherd. Remove from me the distraction of this life, that I may lift up my eyes unto the hills from where my help comes. Thank you. Before God's servant, the bishop will come up to bless us, to give us the word of God. I want to introduce one of the teenagers that will be coming up to give a charge to us, not only to the teenagers, but to the whole church. Praise the Lord. And uh, this teenager I'm about to bring up is somebody I know to be a faithful friend, very dependable trustworthy, focused, and she's legally minded. Praise the Lord. I have known this teenager for the past 17 years, and she's been my very good friend. Amen. I'm sure you're already guessing who this preacher will be this morning. She's beautiful in and out, and she has passion for music. Praise the Lord. This morning, I'm talking about the first daughter of the bishop designate. She is my best friend. Please put your hands together for my own daughter, 
Faith Obot as she comes to be a blessing to us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Let us worship God this morning. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are great. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are I would like to take this opportunity to thank. <coughs> Before I begin, the like for take this opportunity for tell thank you. My dad and my mom for giving me this opportunity here. To so Papa and Mama Wege and this opportunity. There are others who would have done it better than I can. Other people in the way for me doing better. And there are others who would have probably been more qualified to stand here. But other people in the way they fed for canting up here. <laughs> but I'm very grateful, Daddy. I'm very grateful, Mommy. Thank you very much. We tell Una, thank you, Mommy and Daddy. According to World Web, gratitude is a feeling of thankfulness and appreciation. According to World Web, World Web, for tell thank you, na feeling of thankfulness, thank for continuing faith and appreciation and gratitude. Now, for tell thank you. Being thankful doesn't only come into place when you are giving something or when you are expecting something. Very faithful. They not just come into faith the way they expect something. It also applies. You can also do them. When you are giving something small. Where they do small thing. Now I need us to understand that gratitude is a mystery. You understand? Say gratitude is something we will not even understand. And that brings us to the title of our message. And then they bring me to a title where they can't talk about today. Cultivating the habit of gratitude. For cultivate the habit of gratitude. For the self thank you. A mystery of higher liftings. Mister, we don't understand higher liftings. Huh? Sorry. Oh, this year of higher liftings. This year we got the AC up. Um, earlier on last week, our dad, week. during the evening service, made a statement and he said, Life is a game. Bishop and say, life not a game. And just like every other game we know, and just like any other game, there are certain rules regarding every game. Certain things that they were supposed to do. And I'm applying that to life. Now you the use that day for life. Just like our theme of the year is, Jesus will lift us higher and higher. Just like we theme of this year, Jesus will lift us higher and higher. There are certain attitudes that are required of us. Certain things that they were supposed to do. That will make Jesus to actually lift us higher and higher. We're going to make Jesus as we higher and higher. And one of that attitude is gratitude. And one of them is in for tell thank you. Now, gratitude is a mystery. When they tell thank you, nothing we know you understand. That will help us to scale unlimited altitude. Where? 
that would help us to scale unlimited altitude. Where they help you for C. Big, 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 big thing. In other words. In other words. The attitude of gratitude. Where they, where they tell thank you. It makes God to know that. And it makes God know, say. You are ready for higher liftings and higher positions. You're not ready for where it's the up up. When gratitude becomes your lifestyle. Where gratitude is a normal thing for you. Joyful, being joyful also becomes your lifestyle. All day you're glad. <laughs> what you got to yeah. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 92, verse 1 to 3. More going to Psalm 92, 1 to 3. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. Let's move to 10 to 15. But my horn shall thou exalt the horn like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be, an anoint, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies, and my ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruits in the old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. To show forth that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Now, unicorn is a symbol of strength. Not a symbol of strength. And what we're talking about here is that gratitude. Wait till they talk by and I say, for tell thank you. Gives us an open access to supernatural strength. And they give you open access to supernatural be big. Now, when I'm talking about supernatural strength. Now, when they talk about supernatural be big. I'm not talking about having muscles and biceps. And then they talk about then we must then be, be, be guided. I'm talking about God giving us the ability. And they talk about where God they give you the way to fight spiritual warfare. For fat, then bad, 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 bad thing there. They're bully. A grateful man is a happy man. A great woman? Yes. Great woman, a happy one. Yes. So when you show gratitude to God, so when you tell God thank you, God always makes things to go very easy for you. God makes it easy for you. Also, gratitude is an access. Gratitude gives us access. Don't for they tell thank you. They make way for you. To God's presence. To God in presence. Genesis 39, verse 5. Genesis 39, verse 5. <laughs> and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in the house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now, God was with Joseph. And now they were talking about God's presence. Because Joseph had an attitude of gratitude. Because great, Joseph began attitude of foretell thank you. A grateful man does not complain. Great person, you need complain. A grateful man is always content. He's always glad he would say. Now, when Joseph was in the prison, now when Joseph was in a prison, he didn't, he, had, he didn't complain and cause more trouble like other prisoners probably would have done. And they they complain like how the other incompetent jail people they, be they complain. He still continued in his spirit of gratitude. He always be a tell thank you. Now about gratitude, gratitude about is gratitude. not just gratitude is not just saying thank you and that ends it. Not the way you just say thank you, don't don't. There are different expressions and different things that you can do to show that you are grateful. Different things than the way they do and say, the way they show, say, yes, you're glad you're 20, you get. Like in the case of Joseph. Like for Joseph. Joseph didn't necessarily need to thank God every day for being in the prison. Joseph, no, he not be. He didn't necessarily have to thank God every day for being he in know, the prison. He not be get for tell God thank you every day when they're in a prison. But he showed his gratitude to God. When be they tell God thank you. By telling others about God. When be they tell people about God. Now, if you are, if you are grateful to God for salvation. When you're grateful for God for when he save you. 
you will definitely evangelize. You go there tell people about God. Because evangelism, because they tell people about God, is also a way of thanking God for salvation. Now, also one way where you go tell God thank you for when he save you. Now, there are different reasons why people are ingrate, why they don't, why they are not grateful to God for what he has done. But who is in the day why make people then tell people and thank you? Why make the name tell God thank you? Just as the daddy has been saying this month, just like what Bishop Bide said this month, human beings naturally tend to forget things. Not a man, in quick for forget something. And the brain works in such a way that, and you don't think, it's like we, in one kind of way, that if you personally think that something is too small, when you think there's something small, you will naturally forget it. You will forget and quick. The fact that we are awake here, that we are alive, shows that God has been grateful to us. The fact say you see your yourself, it shows say God God don't do but kuba kutine for you. And it is our own turn and our own turn to be grateful to God for what tell and thank you. And to come out and we'll come on and give testimonies, thanking God for giving us life. And we can tell God thank you, say it all give you life. We don't buy life, we don't have we don't have to give anything in exchange for God to give us his blessings. All we have to do is just to be grateful. You know they pay for life, you know they pay for blessings, so if I tell God thank you. In Jesus' name. Inside Jesus' name. As I said earlier on, that gratitude gives us covenant access to his presence. Gratitude, they give we way inside God in presence. Now, what is a covenant? Within a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between God and his people. A way God make agreement with, between me and you. In which God gives a promise. Who say in the promise we something and requires a certain behavior from us. Going back, they want we for do something for her. So if you as a child of God desire to go higher, so if you want to go up up, then you should learn to cultivate the attitude of gratitude. So you back you for no for tell God thank you. Now mm-hmm. in gratitude. When you need to tell God thank you, when you need to tell people then thank you. In gratitude is not respecting God because if you actually respect God when they tell God thank you you mean say you know you don't respect God self because if you actually respect God because we respect God you will thank him for everything he has done he will pay for all what he don't do okay if I buy a shoe for Jeruba like if you buy shoes for me so and I go to a house that I'm gonna muse and I see the shoe turned over in the gutter but I see the Susie, then I got her dotty dotty side. Definitely, I won't want to give her a shoe next time. And I will give me Susie again, no. Because number one. Because one. I'll feel she does not respect me. You go say, me not respect. I'll me not respect does, her. I'll feel she does not respect what I've given to her. She does you not know, respect me. Me not respect what you don't give me. And she does not appreciate me. No, I know I, I'm not glad you with you. So that's just how it is when we come to the presence of God. So now the same thing back with God. When we come to the presence of God, we can inside God in presence, and we are alive, and you they alive. We are breathing, you they breathe. We are walking, you they walk. We are talking, you they talk. And we stand, you they stand up. And yet you don't thank God, thank you. Then tell God thank you. We should tell God thank you from for the small things. For tell God thank you for the small small thing there. So that God will know that we are ready to handle the bigger things. So God gonna say you don't ready for the big big thing there. If God gives you a one room apartment. If God give you one home apartment, one God expects home. God expect you to be able to take care of it to show that you are grateful. God expect you for take care of that they make them fine. And also you pay your rent on time. Like for the parents. It shows that you're also grateful. Show say you glad. And that is when God will know that. And at that time they God gonna say you can handle a bigger apartment. You go able to handle three room, four room apartments. Now, um now. just like Wonder Kids Model School. Just like one that kids model school. Um, by the grace of God, the government has given us our approval. By God in grace, the government approve we. Now, now, when one that kids model school as a whole tells God thank you and shows that they are grateful. When one that kids they say they where they show say that they, they tell God thank you, they glad they bang. It doesn't just mean until they come here as a school and kneel down and thank God thank you. Well, that's part of it. You know me say just they cry, I can't tell God thank you, but yes, that is a part of her. It also starts from. And they also begin keeping the school clean. Where they keep the school clean. Teaching the students according to their syllabus. Where they teach the kids according to how they for teach them. Giving them effective practicals. Giving them creative practical. And thank God that's what the school is doing. And that's what the school they do. It shows God that you are ready, that the school is ready for higher lifting. They show God say the school is ready for where is the up, up, up. Now, now. I'd like to conclude by saying. And go let for close by saying, for saying. 
that this is the right time to show God that we are grateful. At the right time, this for sure God say we're grateful. The fact that you have your admission into the university. The fact say you able to college. You should know that there are others who have not gone to college for over ten years. You know, for not say other people that they were not able to do that day. The fact that you are wearing a shoe today. The fact say you wear suit knife foot today. Should remember that there are mad people walking everywhere with no shoes. Remember say Christmas that they walk and ask you to get shoes. The fact that you have a house to go back to. The fact say you get old for go to. You should remember that there are people under the bridge with no house to live in. For no say people that they under the bridge they not get old. And being grateful. Wait a second, thank you. It also starts with you having to recognize that you don't deserve it. And for also begin, wait for no say this year so. To starting from the smallest forget, thing. Sir. Starting from the smallest thing. Or begin from the small one. The fact that you have hairs on your head, you should know that there are people who don't have hairs on their head. For no say some people that they will not get hairs. The fact that you are married, you should know there's people who died looking for marriage. The fact say you don't marry, but people that they will they look for marriage, they kill for marriage, they not get. The fact that you have children. The fact that you get pekine. And you can take care of them. And you're able to take care of them. You should know that there are people who don't have children. For no say, people that they will not get picking. And there are people who have children. And pe- people that they will get picking. But can't take care of them. But they're not men there. So for every single thing that we've seen in our lives, for the fact that you can read your books. So for all the way they do. For say, say, way they read your book or you your Bible. You be grateful to God for that. For tell God thank you. Read your books and pass your subject. they read your book, you go pass. It's to show God that you are grateful to God that you are in your school. They show God say you you glad you were in our school. And it's to make God to give you His divine presence. And will make God give show you presence throughout your education. But wait throughout your book learning. Now please don't be like Nebuchadnezzar. Now not be like Nebuchadnezzar oh. who was proud and pompous. We say in me na me do this na me do that day. And thought that he deserved everything. When he say na do all thing. And so didn't give thanks to God. So you not tell God thank you. As I said earlier on, the fact that you are married, the fact say you don't marry, you should know that there are others who are not married. For no say other people like they were not married. And should still give thanks to God. And for tell God thank you. God has promised us higher liftings this year. God don't promise we I for us we up up. How many of us have seen the liftings of God in our lives this year? I want people that know say God always say up up this year. You have passed your wayek, you passed your beke, you, you are alive. Pass, you are, you are, same PS, you you bought exam, a car. You don't buy motor car. Just like our daddy and our mommy. Just like with papa and mama. Who have been lifted. Where they don't is where God always say up up. To bishop and first lady. To bishop and first lady. Just like our deacon in the church. Just like we deacon at church. Deacon our check. Has been lifted higher. Wait, don't it's up up. And every one of us has been promoted. Or God has done something good in our lives. God done do something for us. Now we mean this really even wouldn't have been deserved. So it's on test if you not forget her. But God saw it as fit. But God see say this on test forget her. That we should get it. Forget her. Let's please rise on our feet. Oh, all in our public. Please rise. The fact that you have legs and you can stand, be grateful to God and stand up and pray. Because you get foot and I foot. Tell God thank you and pray. Wait, it's in so right now. Pray. And God remember, you. and remember, remember you say, have mouth. Remember, say, you have mouth. You get mouth. And the fact that you show God that you are grateful. And for sure, God say, you're glad you open your mouth and pray to God. You open that mouth and pray. Now let's take this prayer point. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come against the spirit of being ingrate. We come against the spirit of being ingrate. We come against the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. Come against the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. And we pray that you show us your humility. And pray that you show us your humility. By helping us to be grateful. By helping us to be grateful. For the little things in our lives. For the little things in our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now thank you. I would like to call my daddy, my best friend, <laughs> my, my first best friend, my father, my bishop, my pastor, my spiritual mentor. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. That's my lovely daughter. We give God all the praise. I say we give God all the praise. I mean, that's a wonderful message. Wonderful message. I'm proud of you. God bless you. 
So I will just add a little thing to what she has said. My message has changed. I will just add a little thing to that, and then we are through. Amen? Amen. Someone that is ready to be blessed. Can we pray one prayer? Lord, change my foundation. Hey, Lord, change my foundation. So many foundations are corrupt, corrupted by the enemy. Lord, change my foundation. In the name of Jesus. Change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Lord, change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Lord, change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Lord, change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Open your lips and begin to pray. Your foundation determines the fruit you bear. Many are struggling because of wrong and bad foundations. Many are seeing evil because of bad foundation. Lord, change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Change my foundation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Change my foundation in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, change my foundation. Change my foundation. Change my foundation, oh Lord. Change my foundation, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, protect these kids in the name of Jesus. All on that, all these kids on 19, 17, from 14. How many of you are 14 years old? From 14 to 19. Lift up your hand. 14 to 19. Come. Come here. 14 to 19. 14 to 19. Come. I want to make a statement. Listen, you have a duty. Can you tell somebody standing by you, you have a duty to protect these teenagers? My daughter, please come. Then you come. Come up. You come up. I don't have too much space. Just need four people. Come up. You come up. Lord, protect these teenagers. Protect this one. Come, you come. There's a reason why I bring a, you come. There's a reason why I bring these people out. Come, you, you. You have a duty to protect these ones. Can I tell you something? You see how big they are? They don't have legal rights to agree you have to make decisions for them. They don't have legal right. Anytime you see a boy standing by them, go straight to, to that boy and stop him. They don't have legal rights to say yes. Even if they say yes legally, it's not accepted. They are not matured enough. Can you see they look big? To be big doesn't mean you are matured. Is somebody hearing me? So as people in the church, as elders in the church, I'm not talking about ordained old elders. All of you are elders in the church. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. For those who are ordained and they understand their position. You see a boy, you see a man standing by with these people. Go and find out why are you standing with her? Listen, I'm very serious about this. I told my daughter, Anybody asking you for phone number, give my number. And that's what she does. That's what she does. Say, excuse me, give your number. Oh, yes, I have one number I'll give you. you. Give me my number. When you open the cage and you see the lion inside, you don't close it small, small, and, and just walk away. Suffer, suffer. Because I will jail you and put the key in my pockets. Until I'm satisfied. Are you hearing me? We all have a duty to protect these ones. Are you hearing me? From ravenous beasts. Who want to destroy the destinies of these ones. We, we deal with them mercilessly. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? So to be fat, to be big doesn't mean you are matured. Is somebody hearing me? I think that's what I'm going to teach. Oh, my message has changed. It's a wave. 
Lord, keep these ones until their destinies are realized. No evil destiny corrupter will locate these ones. No destiny corrupter will locate these ones. We shield them and cover them in the name of Jesus Christ. No beasts will touch these ones. No beasts will tamper with the flowers of these ones. In Jesus' mighty name. My daughters, please get back to your seats. Hallelujah. It's their day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to perform our duty as parents. And that's what I will be anchoring on for today. My message has changed completely. It's just an atmosphere. It's a wave from heaven that hit me and I changed my message. I don't have any problem with that. Hallelujah. I'm a servant. And a servant has no message of his own. He carries message from his master to deliver. I don't have a message of my own. And after that, I'm going to lay hands on them and then give gifts to all of our, the babies that were born in the commission in this headquarter. Uh, church in the year 2017. Lord, visit every heart, strengthen every destiny, let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Please get seated. Please get seated. I just want to add a few things to the message that was delivered by my daughter. Can you remind me of the theme? Please put the theme of that message right on the screen for us. Hallelujah. Can you put the theme of the message right on the board? Cultivating the habit of gratitude. Well, I will shift it a bit. I will shift it a bit. <laughs> Amen. I have authority to shift the message. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so I want to um, emphasize on our assignments. Falling in love is a reality. Tell your neighbor, falling in love is a reality. But you can reap a great harvest by loving God. Tell your neighbor you can reap a great harvest by loving God. Tell another neighbor you can reap a great harvest by loving God. So, I think I just take that as my the title. You know, harvest by loving God. You can reap harvest by loving God. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it yet entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. For those who love him. Eyes have not seen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it yet entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. You can reap a great harvest by loving God. You can reap a great harvest just by loving God. And when you are approved by God as a lover of God. When God approves you as his lover then you stand to reap a great harvest in life. When God approves you as his lover, then you stand to reap a great harvest in life. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it yet entered into the heart of mine. The things that God has prepared, which are harvests, the things that God has prepared, the great harvest that God has prepared for those who qualify as his lover. I pray that your love for God shall be testified even in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Understand that God's faithfulness hangs upon the mercy dimension he has for humanity and how much he loves you. He keeps you alive because he loves you it keeps you in health because he loves you. It keeps you in spite of all the adversaries that are hitting against you just because he loves you. And so he expects you to love him in return. And as you love him, and he testifies, he said, he is the one that loves me. Just as he said to David, David is a man after my heart. 
David is a man after my heart. Because David truly loved God. David was a prince. David was an instrumentalist. David was a poet. David was a fighter. David was an army general. David was a, 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 a fast shooter. A strategist. David occupied numerous positions in life. And yet that did not affect his love for God. He would go into the sanctuary to pray three times a day. He would go into the sanctuary to dance before the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you, O Lord, for making me your favorite. Thank you, O Lord, for liking me. Thank you, Father. He just danced and celebrated God. And as he kept celebrating God, God kept loving him, kept expressing his love towards him, kept bringing him into encounters with strange harvest of blessings. Till today, the city of Jerusalem is still called the city of David. Amen? Surprisingly, David was not the first, you know, head of state of the state of Israel. He was not the first king, sorry. He was not the first king. And yet, it's as if Israel never had any king before but David. If you ask any, any people in the school, who's the king? The king of Israel, it was a David. Because someone took time to be a lover of God. May you channel your love, your emotions, your strength, your mind, your finances towards loving God. Can you say amen to that? Great harvest awaits you as you love him. Number two, learn to love one another. Learn to do what? Love one another. Channel your love. Let it be vertical as you love God because of the faithfulness of God in your life and let it also be horizontal. You love one another. It's not a, it's not a poem. Love one another. I've seen it so many times in all over the place. Love one another. People are not putting it into practice. I want to raise up an army of genuine lovers of one another from this assembly. Can you say amen to that? Put it to practice. It's not just by saying it. Love one another. And then you maintain the peace. In the city, you maintain the peace. In the community, you maintain the peace. In your family, you maintain the peace wherever you're found. That's the next thing. Learn to love one another. Why am I saying learn? You need to learn because there's so much hatred in the heart of people for each other. Watch social media. You will know that there is, there is satanic hatred in the heart of man towards another. Find the things they say about others. Find how they are fighting others. Find how they want other somebody to lie. How they want. There's so much hatred in the heart of man for one another. And that's why I stand here today, this morning, to ask you to love one another. Can you say amen to that? Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Bishop says, love one another. Ask him, neighbor, would you love one another? Neighbor, can you let me know, do you really love me? Or you are just sitting there because there is no other seat empty? Are you happy you are sitting by me? Or you are just tolerating me because there is no way to move to? Love one another. Love one another. You are not to judge but to love. There is only one debt that God allows you to owe one another. And that is love. He said, oh, continue. It's an eternal debt. You owe me love. You owe your neighbor love. You owe your everybody. He said, you should have that indebtedness. Be indebted to somebody with love. Are you hearing me? You need to love somebody. Not love one another. You need to love one another. Hallelujah. So friendship must end in love. Starts friendship. There should be true love. It begins with love. It should end in love. It should continue in love. Hallelujah. You know, I told you before, the first thing that I met that came to my heart was falling in love is a reality. Falling in love is what? A reality. And it is beautiful. To love one another is beautiful. To love one another. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 16. After this service, every iota of hatred in your heart shall be wiped away by the Holy Spirit. 
Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. Now I bring this scripture up because it is children's day. He said, when thy king is a child. He said, woe to you, O land, when thy king is a child. When thy king is a child. And that's what I want to examine. It's what I want to examine and, and uh, you know, bring out a lot of things that will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, it is a pity when your king is a child. It's a pity. When it says, woe to your land when your king is a child. It means, number one, it is a pity if your king is a child. It's like saying, what a pity if your king is your child. Now, don't think very far. When a king is your child, you say, okay, I'm not a king. Okay, let me change. When your husband is a child. <laughs> Woe to that family when your husband is a, a child. It's a pity. I pity that family when your husband is a child. I pity that family when your wife is a child. I pity that family when your wife is a child. When your husband is a child. <laughs> when your husband is a child, he goes around getting angry with everybody. You know, he doesn't have genuine reason. He's just bottled up. There's something in his heart that he's not dealing with. Woe to that family if your husband is a child. He does not know how to handle issues. He's a child. He doesn't know how to handle issues of life. Praise God. What to ye learn when your wife is a child? It's a pity when your wife is a child. It's a pity when your wife is, when your husband is a child. How can a king be a child? How can a husband be a child? How can a wife be a child? How can a managing director be a child? <laughs> what to that company when the managing director is a child? <laughs> so it spreads all over. It's not limited to, you know, the idea you had before. Amen. Can an adult be a child? No, I'm asking you. There are too many children who are 50s looking at me. Too many babies. Can an adult be a baby, be a child? <laughs> well, don't worry. <laughs> we will answer it. Hmm. How can a childish spouse help himself? Too many questions. But we need to. And how can you help a childish spouse to grow and be a man? <laughs> Amen? Who is a child? That's where to start. Who is a child? Ask your neighbor, who is a child? Who done a child? Who done a king? Who done a king? Who done a king? Who done a king? Who is a child? Number one. A child is someone that has no capacity that lacks capacity to handle the task ahead of him. A child is one that lacks the capacity to handle the task. If he's in marriage, he becomes a child when he has no capacity to handle the challenges of marriage. He is a child. Because that is one of the attributes of being a, of a child. A child simply lacks capacity to handle issues. Now let me bring up an example. One of my sons, we call him professor. Because this boy is too sharp. This boy is too sharp. It's too sharp. But academically, you can't beat him. I say you can't. At his age, if you are his age, you cannot beat him.
But there are certain things he has lacks capacity to handle. Even when he wants to wear his jacket, he can cry. If he wears the jacket and the jacket is like this, he will just cry. I said, lift this thing, it will enter you. He has no capacity to handle that. But, you know, he's very sound academically. I had to change the nursery school, change primary school, change schools for him. Because I was, I thought those schools were, you know, substandard schools. It would not be coming first, 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 first. I said, change. Let's look for a tough school. Let me see whether it's just fake or something real. We change. We put him in another book. It's coming first, first, first. I said, ah, let's change again. Look for the toughest school in this town. Until they landed him in um, international school. And since he entered for the past years, it's been one, 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 one. But to wear his socks, to wear his shoe, he, can, he may lack capacity to wear his. He can cry. That means he's still a child. No matter how academically sound he is, he's a child. You can have a safety kit and qualify. I have MBA. But you are a child. You don't have capacity to handle issues of marriage. You are still a child. In fact, you are a master's degree child. <laughs> I mean, praise God. So that's a child. Amen. Who is a child? Judges chapter 8, verse 20. Judges chapter 8, verse 20. Judges chapter 8, verse 20. I, mean, I, I think, I think uh, um, he, he was he the one that came second once. He came second and was crying. Uh, he cried like this. I said, what's the matter? He cried and went and hid himself in the room. I said, what's the matter? I told the beat him. When I collected the certificate, I saw second. For the first time in his life, he cried. A child. He's a child. <laughs> He said, a child, praise God. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay him. This is a king, they brought an enemy captured from the battlefield. And they put the enemy there. And he told his firstborn, up, kill him. Ah, uh, eh? What did the king say to his first son? He said, up and slay this man. And he said unto Jetha, his first son, firstborn, up and slay them. He said, what did the Bible say? He said, but the youth drew not his sword, for he feared. Because he was yet a youth. He lacked capacity to handle the challenge. So when you see a husband or when you see someone in the office who lacks capacity to handle basic issues that concern his assignment, he's still a child. Everyone is still growing. In case you are still growing, God will lift you to another level. Remember, it's a year of higher liftings. God will lift you higher and higher. Whatever, wherever you are now, physically speaking, that you need to climb higher, my father will lift you there this morning. Can you say an amen to that? A child, who is a child? One who is unable to handle a task. It's a child. It's unable to handle a task. Don't quarrel with these kids at home. They are children. Sometimes they may not be able to handle the task well. Are you hearing me? You know? You know, one of, one of, one of them came to lead prayer and you see the way he was leading. Don't don't be talking. Can you see the way he's leading? He's a child. You have to be here with, with her. You laugh. You whisper to another person. And you see the way he's leading. He's leading prayer. Mm. He's a child. Are you hearing me? You have to bear with the child. Sometimes if they give you some assignment, you can't do it. You can't. So they were just told to come and do what they were doing. So you should congratulate them for doing it the way they did. Uh, someone was asked one of the children to read scripture, you know, offered, and he forgot things, and you are laughing and you are shouting. Some of you, if I bring you out here, you, 
you go, you almost shit in a trusser. <laughs> As they say in my place. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are children. Today we are celebrating children. Celebrating, you know, our teenagers. And they are growing. They are growing so, so wonderfully well. Praise God. I say praise God. Hallelujah. Who is a child? One that is unable to handle a task. He could not handle a task on her a turn. He could not handle it. They said, up and kill him. And he could not draw out the sword. It is his war. His war. Eh? But he could not. And they said it's not because his, his sword was not sharp. Or because he did not have strength. But he did not have capacity to do it. Whatever is the assignment God has given to you, God has given you something since January, and you lack capacity to execute the assignment. I mean, after this, this morning, you should rise up and go and execute that assignment that God has given to you. Some of you needed to have started business a long time, but you are still dragging your feet. You lack capacity to do it. Some of you would have done something. Some of you, God has spoken to you concerning an assignment and a task for you to do. But you are still unable to do it. You lack capacity to do it. It is my prayer that after this morning, that capacity shall surface. And you shall have the ability to go and perform the assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. Who is a child? Who is a child? Hallelujah. What is the position of an adult? An adult, a father, an adult, a mother, an adult, a senior brother, an adult, a big woman in the church, an adult, a big man in the church who sits there and has is 40 years, is 30 years, is 50 years. It's 54 years. It's 56 years. What is his assignment towards a child? What is his assignment towards a child? In the church. You see small children, the boy is beating each, they are beating themselves at the corner of the church. You walk and pass. You have failed in your assignment. Now I'm talking to you. Are you hearing me? You have failed in your assignment. No, in case you didn't hear me, because you thought I was talking to somebody else. I'm talking to you. Now, you see a small child fighting hmm, with each other, and you pass. You look at because it's not your child. This one no concern me. I know some of you that these children, they just pass. You have failed as an adult. You have failed as an adult. You have failed as an adult. One day I was driving. I think I was, it was with you. Was it with you? When we went to after Waterloo to go and look for land, something, some many years ago, you forgot. Some, I think there was somebody in the car, and we had a child was crying. He had firewood to carry. Eh? Was it not you? It wasn't you. Okay, I went with some. He had firewood. They, they, they bought firewood. Was so big, she was crying because she couldn't carry it. Maybe the mother said, if you don't bring that firewood today, I they cut off your head. This boy was screaming. Nobody was there in the bush. He was screaming. So I said, ah, what is this? What is making this kind of... So I stopped. I found out that it was firewood. I went and carried for him. I don't know him from anywhere. I should have just driven and passed. That is how to be an adult. That's how to be a mature man. You see a 10-year-old girl standing with a 19-year-old boy at the corner, maybe beside the church. You, you pass. You don't say, excuse me, boy. Why are you standing with this girl? Is it your sister? No. Come on! Leave that place. That is how to be an adult. That's how to be a matured adult. It's not every adult that is matured. You can be an adult and then you are not matured. You don't know how to protect the destinies of these young ones. Don't you know you have an assignment to protect their destiny? And you see some wolf who move around. Some of them move from church to church. They do evil in church. When they finish, they go to another church to go and frustrate another destiny. We catch you here and throw you out with that demon. 
You won't bother to cast out the demon. You and the demon will throw you out. Hallelujah. We must protect these young ones. We must do what? Protect these young ones. We must protect these young ones. We must protect these young ones. Hallelujah. Adults are supposed to protect young people. Adults are supposed to do what? Adults are supposed to do what? So if you are an adult and you don't protect the young people, you are not an adult. You are a, you are a child. You are a child. Because you are not doing your assignments. Adults are supposed to protect the young people. We have to be concerned about what is happening to young people in our midst. We have to be concerned. We have to be concerned about what is happening, especially in a season like this. We have to be concerned about what is happening to young people. We have to be concerned if we want to have a future that is glorious. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And we do that in church. We do that outside church. We have to be concerned. Look at what the Bible is saying in Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 8. Now look at a wonderful scripture. Very beautiful scripture. Songs of Solomon chapter 8. We have a little sister. Can you say we have a little sister? Uh -huh. We have a little sister. What kind of sister do you have? Little. A little sister. And she has no breast yet. That means not mature. It's not this baby. We have a little sister. And what happens? She has no breast yet. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken of? What shall we do for our sister? These are mature people in the family who sit down and think about what they shall do to their little sister. What are they to do? They are to protect their little sister. They are to do what? Until the day she is spoken of. Until the day a suitor comes when she's matured. But every senior in the family, they have a duty to protect their little sister. Can you say big amen to that? Not a mother that tell a little, little, little girl, go in the door, go in the door. Your, your mates stay in the door. Then they bring money, come in the house. They bring rest. That's not the kind of adult we are talking about. That's not the kind of adult we are talking about. We are talking about adults that are careful enough to protect the destiny of their little ones. Do you like me this morning? Even if you don't like me, it doesn't matter. God likes me. If you see God ask him, he will say, I like Bishop Obot. I like him. He's my son. I like him. Protect your little ones. Protect your little ones. Until the day that she is spoken of. Until that day, you have a duty to protect her until the day somebody comes to marry her. When it's due time, then you release. Until the day she is spoken of. And all those men going around, you know, like that. Some of the men would not like me this morning, but they will like me later. You can't go around destroying these little ones and run away. Protect. We have a sister. We have a sister. Can you see? Those are senior people in the, that family. They say, we have a little sister. What shall we do for her? He said, we shall protect her until the day she's spoken of. That's a good family. That's a good family. You are so quiet today because I'm not saying you'll be a millionaire. I don't, I don't say so. I don't say so. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm to give you wisdom. That's my assignment. Uh -huh. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about money at all. I'm to give you wisdom to live life. Are you hearing me? I will give you pastors after my heart. That's what God said. They will equip you with wisdom and understanding. That's my assignment. For this purpose came I into the world. 
Praise God. The elder sister should protect the younger sister. The younger and inexperienced sister. And if you want to protect the younger sister, let the elder sister not say, go and call the boy to come. Because you are not protecting her. Go and call my boyfriend to come. No, you go and call yourself. Don't send a little sister to do that. You want to drink beer, that's your business. Don't send that little one to go and do it. One day I was driving in some corners, you know, in Nigeria. I was driving where you have to navigate through houses. It's a house here. Well, it was a village kind of structure. I saw small bo two small boys. They, they, they were not wearing clothes. Very small, very small. Maybe two, three years old. They were smoking. They wrapped paper. They wrapped paper. P paper. The other one was holding something. It was, it was brownish. When I look at it, it was plantain leaf. You know plantain? That leaf, the dry one. They stole matches. They were hiding at the back of the house. They said, I stopped the car. I was watching them. I said, what is this? <laughs> I said, what is this? I stopped the car. I came out. I tipped to them. They were still standing. I grabbed him. He said, he said, please, please. I said, no, no, please. Who is in the house? I never knew them. Who is in the house? One old woman came out. I said, are these your grandchildren? He said, yes. He said, I saw them smoking. Oh, they are smoking. As small as they are smoking. They are smoking. He said, hey, thank you. I've been telling the father. I've been telling the father. The father, the father has been smoking. <laughs> I said, when the father comes back, if I pass by here, tell him somebody's coming to see him. Hmm? And when I come there, if I see him, I say, you are under arrest. And somebody saying, are you a police? I have right to arrest. I have about four rights. Police have one right extra. I think the master is there. Am I correct? How many rights? The police have five. <laughs> I, have, I have five. Police have six. You see that I'm correct? Can you clap for me? I'm correct. That's the authority. <laughs> if I tell the man you are under arrest, are you police? I say, you will soon know whether I'm police. Just fall out first. <laughs> Praise God. Is somebody blessed this morning? Hallelujah. God repay my foundation. Some of the foundations are already bad. Today, God will repair your foundation. There are some families, they are going through evil, going through all manner of things because the foundation is bad. Rise up on your feet and lift up your hand and say, God, repair my foundation. I want to see a change. Repair, repair my foundation. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, repair my foundation in the name of Jesus. Every broken down foundation every faulty foundation, every foundation that was laid wrongly by grandfather, by great-grandfather, by father, by mother, every wrong foundation. Lord, repair, repair. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, repair my foundation. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to walk under this bad foundation. Repair my foundation. Repair my family foundation. Repair my foundation, oh Lord. Are you sure you are praying? I thought you should be praying. Pray, 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 pray. Pray and clap your hands and pray. Pray and lift up your voice and pray. Pray and ask the Lord to repair your foundation so that your life can be better. So that your children can make progress. Every faulty foundation, every foundation of serpents, every foundation laid, laid by my mad spirits in your family, every foundation led by serpentine spirit in your family every foundation led by human blood in your family lift up your voice and ask the lord repair my foundation repair the foundation of my family 
repair the foundation of my business. Repair the foundation of my career. God, repair my foundation. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray that after this morning, you will run into very wonderful harvests because you want to love the Lord. The love of God in your heart will connect you with a blessing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Please get seated. Remember, we are talking about children here. And by implication, you know, we use it to apply to various aspects of life. And we are saying, God, repair my foundation. Hallelujah. Listen. Once the emotion of a little girl has been tampered with, that girl will, may not, not it may, she may not be able to concentrate in studies anymore. She may not be able to make progress anymore. Once the emotion of a little girl has been corrupted, that's why we need to protect the young ones. You need to protect the children. Once the emotion of a little girl has been tampered with, her destiny is derailed. Her destiny is derailed. She won't be able to listen to the father again. She won't be able to listen to the mother again. Because